The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Stock Market Authority Podcast. I'm Bakes, Kevin Baker. I'm going to teach you how to make money in up and down markets. Very few podcasters or coaches cover this. I'll show you how to lock in profits and minimize losses to make you a better investor. So once a week, you're going to know what's going on in the world and the stock market. Welcome to the Stock Market Authority Podcast. I love my guitar work. I'm sorry. I just It gives me a smile every single time. That's how simple I am. Hey, this is Bakes. I'm the Stock Market Authority. Uh, Chrissy is my producer, and it is uh, Wednesday morning, the, the 7th, uh, Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, and I hate to start off uh, with, a, with a subject, uh, but I think it's important. Um, you know, your crypto and stocks can always go lower. And this came to me as I watch CNBC way too much. And they always have on the chart, you know, it's down X year to date. So, uh, you know, the, the Bitcoin is down year to date or, or, or uh, Facebook is down year to date. And, you know, it looks like a big percentage. And it, I think it does a disservice. I'll go into why. Uh, the, what matters is, is where the businesses or the ETFs are now, their fundamentals and valuation. And uh, frankly, crypto has neither. We're going to talk about crypto a lot because my phone's been blowing up. With FTX things, uh, the mailbag uh, got a lot of uh, crypto and FTX questions, so we're going to dive into that and uh, a host of other topics that came up, and we'll go through the portfolio. Again, I'm not the only podcast that I see out there that actually shows you know real investments that we're, that I'm making uh, in a, in a real account and how I'm doing to keep my feet to the fire. So we'll talk about. Uh, Blackstone's troubles and shorting real estate and, and, and some other things as well. Um, so uh, this is where I, I want to remember to please go to my website, stockmarketauthority.com. If you sign up, I get you a how to sell video that is, I think, very valuable because almost no one talks about how to get out of stocks, both your winners and your losers. Uh, and sign up for, for free for my newsletter as a thank you. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, and and sign up for podcasts wherever you uh, podcast Spotify YouTube etc. Follow me on your favorite social media, uh, especially uh, uh, DM me. I love that. I'm, the feedback is is absolutely invaluable. And you're smart people, but the lawyers make me say this. This isn't financial advice. I don't know your financial situation in and out. And frankly, all I do is show you what I'm doing. Talk about what I'm thinking, and and always have uh, have full disclosure. So um, uh, it's great to be here. Top story uh, is is the <laughs> uh, the percentage uh, uh, of, of of an asset going down is irrelevant. And uh, I know that isn't a you know maybe a sexy topic, but I think it's really important because. When you talk to a lot of people, they say it's down so much, and it connotes that th there's a bottom in and there's a positive change coming, or it's so cheap you can't lose. And, uh, folks, I I've seen this movie before, and, and I've seen things that go down a lot and then get cut in half again, and, um, uh, and I don't want that to happen to you. And, frankly, it probably already has. But I want you to, you know, listen to this part and think about uh, uh, what I've seen. And, and I'm just giving you some cold, hard examples. And especially given the crypto focus that we seem to have in this FTX and this uh, scam bankrupt fraud era, Sam Bankman Freed, uh, Coinbase is my, is my first example. And it's probably an extreme one, but I think it's, it's, it's valuable. You know, Coinbase is... is uh, uh, the trading platform for crypto, publicly traded, audited, financials, the whole nine yards. And so it's not FTX, but all that's, that's damning it with faint praise. It is not a good stock and hasn't been for some time. And when public at 429, somewhere, some poor bastard has a ticket where he bought this stock at 429. Uh, just astonishing. You look to the right now. The stock's at 42.40, down 90%. And, you know, so I can understand why people get excited and say, ooh, it's down so much. 
the the whole problem is is that if you go look at this cascade, this waterfall down, there were steps along the way that someone had a, a, a spreadsheet or a rationale or a narrative that said Coinbase is cheap here and things are going to get better for these reasons. And so with Bitcoin going from 10000 to 67000 that's when you want to go public, and they did. They fed the ducks. Uh, that's just that's the way the Wall Street works, and IPOs tend to happen at, at very ebullient times. So uh, with, with Bitcoin retreating, the, the stock uh, has been cascading lower ever since. And so now where are we? That's my whole point is that, you know, it doesn't matter what happened at 429. It matters what happens at 42 and what happens over the next 12 to 18 months. The company's still losing money. Look at this, this arrow over here to the far left. It is losing money. It charges very high fees, and it's still losing money. And what's it worth? I'm sure somebody has a dividend discounted cash flow model spreadsheet somewhere that says it's going to be worth 100 in 2030. Maybe. But over the you know, the time frame that I think of, the next year or two, I don't see uh, how this business gets better in the future. If you uh, wanted to do, if you were interested in crypto before, FTX just said to you, uh, I'll, I'll go do something else. I can burn my money someplace else. The whole industry is is cast into question. The uh, uh, if you're a, a CEO of a company, you're not going to be Michael Saylor at MicroStrategy and saying, hey, let's put uh, Bitcoin on our balance sheet up to our eyeballs. It just isn't going to happen. It's just common sense. So, you know, I want you to really look at this picture. And, you know, for those of you listening to me, you know, going down 90 percent, this still is going lower in my view. Because the crypto world has completely changed. The Pomp Podcast hardly talks about Bitcoin anymore uh, and, and about, about uh, crypto. And the, the uh, enthusiasm, enthusiasm in this space is going to be gone for a long, long time. So uh, I, I just really wanted you to pay attention to this. And this is, uh, I'm having fun with this, okay? I, you know, I, I don't know about your dietary thoughts, but I'm a carnivore down to my bone marrow. Look at me. You know, I'm the size of a Buick sometimes. And uh, this is Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat went, uh, went public, you know, uh, at a time when everybody said the total addressable market, the TAM, is billions and billions of dollars and people eat meat and it's bad for the environment and it's unhealthy and we're going to have a better alternative. Well, the problem is the product isn't good and people don't like it. That isn't an opinion. That's looking at this stock chart. It is just not worked out. The... the um, uh, the IPO came at 239, which is an astonishing number. We're down to 13. We're down 94%, and it still can go lower because what's happened? Uh, along the way, everybody uh, on the downside said, McDonald's is testing this out. There's going to be a, a, a Beyond Burger here and, and Wendy's and, and, and KFC and so forth. And, uh, you know, People don't like the product. I mean, it's just that simple. Or not enough people like the product. And you can have your dietary thoughts and discipline, but you don't need to buy Beyond Meat. And, and it just, this, this isn't working. This just flat out isn't working. And it, it still can go lower in my view. So, uh, you know, I, I, don't buy this stock. I mean, this is, that is an advice, but I still think this can go lower. I don't see anything changing that is, is going to have them make a lot of money in 2023-24 in order to, to, uh, to turn this around. And my next example is, uh, is Tesla. I mean, I get uh, calls and questions and emails all the time on Tesla. A lot of people drive the cars. A lot of people love the cars. A lot of people love the stock. And I want you to distinguish between the two. Uh, the, 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 the stock isn't the, the car at all. Uh, when this went into the S&P, we started this big run. We you know, launched from 20 to 30 to 40 and peaked out at 414. And to their credit, you know, they have a very uh, well-regarded uh, vehicle. It is, is uh, highly in high demand. 
They turn to profitability. They turn to cash flow positive, And they should be rewarded for that. And that's great. Now, we can argue about the valuation as, 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 as long as you want to. But the bloom is off this rose and the stock has rolled over. We're now down at 177, down 57%. And a wrinkle that I propose to you is I listened to Kara Swisher and Scott Galloway on the Pivot podcast. And Kara had six friends. Now, she's a liberal and these are six liberal friends, but they're saying, I'm done with Tesla. I'm sick of Musk. I'm sick of his, you know, uh, leaning to the right, being Republican, uh, uh, you know, opening the floodgates at Twitter. And people are voting with their wallets. And uh, uh, I propose to you, tell me what you're hearing on the ground. Have you changed your perception of Tesla? Have you sold it? Have you delayed a purchase or, or decided to go with one of the many able competitors that are now out there? And so the uh, when you look at Tesla today, that 414 level doesn't matter. It's the 177 number right now. And, you know, let's say that, that, that they, they do $5 next year in earnings. Can the stock trade at a 30 multiple? Maybe. That's 150, 20, 100, and so forth. So uh, just because it's down doesn't mean it's a buy. And this chart is telling me that it is not a buy. And um, uh, I, I really want you to, uh, to, to be cautious. Again, please go to my website, stockmarketauthority.com. Sign up for my free newsletter. Please sign up uh, and, and subscribe and share my YouTube channel, my podcast, Follow on your favorite social media. And again, this isn't financial advice. You're, you're, you're smart folks. Incoming! There's a letter in your mailbox. You got mail. <laughs> Chrissy's run amok. God bless you. Uh, Bill from Florida uh, came in, and I, 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 uh, as I was driving over here, I got a, uh, uh, a text message. And, uh, you know, Bill asked, what do I do with my crypto? And Charlie from New York said, uh, uh, you know, is this like Amazon and Google after the dot-com bust? And uh, my, my short answer is no. Uh, it is not. And I, but I, I, I kind of appreciate the, the analogy that you made. But number one, Amazon and Google are businesses. And they create revenues and, and you know, eventually EBITDA and, and, and cash flow and earnings. And uh, with crypto, you don't have that. So uh, believe me, I'm looking for reversals in everything and positive change throughout the stock market, including in crypto. And it isn't here right now. The, I was struck by this. The, the, this is from uh, Motley Fool. Uh, I, I was stunned by this. What investments do Gen Z and millennial investors own? Number one is crypto. The highest percentage of people out there own crypto, and then stocks, and then way down the list is index funds. If anything, that should be flipped. You own the index fund as your base because it's really tough to beat the S&P, the 500 best companies in America, and maybe have some individual stocks. And crypto ought to be tiny, in, 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 in my opinion. Um, and it just, it, it's common sense to me. The... Just think about this logically. You know, FTX has gone uh, gone into bankruptcy. What do they do in bankruptcy? They try to pay the creditors, and they try to make investors whole. And so what do they do? They sell everything down to the studs. They sell all the fancy-schmancy penthouses at the Albany Club, and, and, and then they go for, you know, they obviously raise as much cash as they can. They sell all the shit coins at whatever price they can get, and then if there's any Bitcoin lying around, they're going to sell that too, and they're going to hand the U.S. dollars, yes, fiat currency, over to the investors uh, and, and the, the creditors at cents on the dollars. And the fact that it's in the Bahamas makes it a, a legal mess that's going to go on for years and years and years. So I always focus on what, you know, what's best for you. And so I don't get into the, the arguments about who, who knew what, why, did, why wasn't it detected, where were the regulators. I don't care about any about that. I care about you. And if you own crypto, and obviously this Motley Fool chart suggests that you do own crypto, many of you, I would say the, the, whatever you th are willing to have go to zero, that's what you should own. 
And anything above that, just get out of Dodge, take your tax loss, and, and go on to other things. Because, uh, th- you know, this can go lower too from here. And, and just because it's, Bitcoin is 67000 at the peak down to seventeen, why is 17000 cheap? Why is that a magic number? Uh, I, I can come up with many scenarios where they drive this lower, given the scenarios I just, I just laid out. So I hope I'm not being vague, but uh, uh, I would sell down to the, uh, the, the sleeping point, as I've said before, with crypto, both Bill and, uh, and Charlie. Uh, Dan from Massachusetts wrote in and asked, is the Fed going to pivot? Uh, and my short answer is, I don't know. And I take what the market is giving me. So I pull up my S&P chart here and I show that this, this um, you have this spike on decent volume, by the way, which I tend to respect. You know, Powell, in essence, said, I'm going to raise interest rates 50 basis points next time and for a while versus 75. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. And the market liked it. And and you had a pop and people got excited and the S&P goes above the 200 day. We've round tripped all of that as, as I sit here right now. So uh, I, I want you to invest in the market ha- you have, not the, the market you wish for. If If the Fed does pivot, I'm afraid that's going to be, they're going to see something really bad out there, and that's the reason for the pivot, where they start lowering rates. And by the way, stocks go down after the Fed starts to lower rates after, after a period of tightening. So be careful what you wish for. So I don't know what the Fed's going to do. I don't know if the Fed knows what the Fed's going to do, but I anticipating a Fed pivot and investing accordingly – I think is is not the way to approach this. I look at all the charts that are out there, every ETF, and you know I don't see a reversal that's imminent. Now I could be wrong and I could be late, but I'm not going to lose a lot of money because I've, I've got the cell discipline that we've talked about. So, but I I would avoid you know trying to front run something that happens in the future. I don't think economists pick stocks well at all. And I don't want you to become an economist and have your view of the Fed dictate how you allocate assets in, in, uh, in, in this or any environment. So, uh, Dan, I hope I've been helpful with that. And if I haven't been, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, Mike from New York asked for a uranium update. And uh, for long-term viewers of the show and listeners to the podcast, uh, I was on uranium before uranium was cool. Uh, we bought this. We bought uranium stocks in July, in the middle of COVID, uh, 2000. And we, we, as you can tell here, here's the buy at 30. And with these three arrows that our cell discipline told us to do, we were out at 60. So we doubled our money in uranium, and most people never even heard about it over that, that period of time unless you were here uh, paying attention to, to, to us. So I listened to my charts versus my opinions. Like I think there's a bull case that, that gets spot uranium, physical uranium, not the futures, from the $18 low to the 40s where we are to 130, which is the old 07 high eventually. But if the market tells me to get out, I get out and I don't argue with it. I take my double, I say thank you, and I let that cash either sit there or have it crouch to, to pounce on other opportunities. And that's very different the way that most individual and institutional investors can invest. And I embrace it. It's working. We're up in this down market. And uh, I, I keep st- tuned to this, this space, uh, Mike, because I don't want you to worry. I, w- I look at this all the time, certainly monthly at a minimum. And uh, if I buy uranium stocks again, I will let you know and everybody know right after I do so. But we're not there right now. Okay, let's go to the portfolio. Uh, and it, <laughs> the, uh, you know, I listen to more podcasts than just about anybody I know, and certainly, you know, investing financial podcasts. 
And uh, I put my money where my mouth is, and I don't see a lot of other folks doing this. Here's a real account, real assets, uh, real ETFs that that I think have uh, uh, ways to make you money, and I want you to at least consider them. Uh, my boys, Bobby and Jack, who I started this for, you know, follow me very closely, but we're up 2.52%. Uh, that's up. Uh, in, in a down market, the S&P is down 181 as uh, at, at the end of uh, well, yesterday when I, when I uh, typed the show up. So I think that's pretty good. I don't care about relative performance, and I don't want you to. My goal, as I've stated from the beginning, is I want to make money every single year. And uh, that's very difficult, as we all know, but so far I'm doing it. And uh, I'm proud of that. But I'm not resting on my laurels. I want to uh, continue the positive trends. And I want you to at least have some insight as to what I've done and what I might do down the road. And I want to get your feedback. I want to you know, keep the, the, the text and the tweets and the DMs coming so we all can make more money together. I'm, we're 56% short. We, in essence, shorted the crap first. We shorted the SPAC crap, and then we shorted Kathy Wood's crap. And then right down the line, uh, as 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 you know, the as higher interest rates brought down the asset prices of just about everything, and it helped our our, our ETFs that are short some of these things to to go up. We are long. We own agriculture and small cap energy, and that could change at some point down the road. But that's where we are, and we're thirty three percent in cash. And the cell discipline very naturally, and I think elegantly, told me to, and I obeyed it, to, to lighten up on some things that weren't, weren't working out as well as I wanted them to, or as the charts told me to, and we raise cash naturally. And I want to stress that the pros can't do this. You as an individual investor have such a huge advantage, it's monstrous, and I know I've talked about this maybe too much, but... There isn't an institutional investor out there that can be 33% in cash and, and, you know, poised to dribble right or left, as the case may be. And uh, I think it's a huge advantage. And uh, I went through every chart uh, uh, that I have in my system, thousands of them, for you at the end of the month. And, and here's what I've come up with. Now, uh, and I posted this yesterday uh, everywhere we own REK, the, the ProShares Short Real Estate uh, uh, ETF. And we uh, bought this about two months ago on this, this left arrow that you see here, this breakout. And we're about flat. We're not making you know, any money right now. But I was struck by the fact that, that the headlines this week uh, in the papers and CNBC talked about the Blackstone REIT, B-R-E-I-T, to, to you know, create an acronym, uh, you know, one of the most widely uh, regard, uh, owned and regarded and respected uh, private real estate investment trust that owns rental housing, uh, logistics warehouse for e-commerce, the Amazons of the world, the uh, data centers that, that obviously, you know, provide redundancy and what have you, those kinds of commercial real estate Holdings and Asian investors in particular, but investors overall, uh, were clamoring to get their cash out so much that that Blackstone put up the gates. So they said, you know, it's two percent a month, five percent a quarter maximum that will uh, allow to go out the door. And um, my, uh, I had an exchange with Bob, who's forgotten more about REITs than I know. Uh, but I said, you know, if Blackstone's got a problem, everybody's got a problem. And so just picture how this works. Uh, XYZ investor in Hong Kong says, I need my $50 million back. They don't have $50 million in cash sitting around. Yes, they have lines of credit and all that stuff. But, you know, they've got to go sell a casino in Las Vegas. They've got to sell a warehouse in, in Conshohock in Pennsylvania. I'm making that up. But you get the idea. The, this, these are not assets that move readily and turn, convert into cash readily. And so if there's a built-in selling demand after, it's just as simple, too. The, buying real estate was fun. During, fun. 
with with zero percent interest rates. Now that we're getting to five, six, seven mortgage rates and what have you, it's less fun, and the assets are worth less. And now you have to go find buyers in a depressed market, and it's not cataclysmic. Uh, I, I don't think. There's nothing nefarious going on here, but I think it's just logically demand for commercial real estate is coming down and interest rates going up make the value of any real estate that you do have go down. It's just that simple. So uh, uh, I think we're going to make some money on, on REK, but I'm fascinated by the fact that the charts sort of alerted us to the opportunity and then the newspapers show up two months later. And uh, this happens all the time. happened with uranium, too, by the way. So stay tuned here. As I find new things to, to pounce on, I will relay those to you. Uh, next is silver. And uh, I, I'm not, I have not pulled the trigger on this yet, but I'm intrigued by the fact that the, the volume is picking up on the up days, and it looks like it wants to base. And... Precious metals have had a very difficult time. I've always said that if you can't have precious metals rally when you have a 9.1% inflation print, when the hell are they going to rally? Maybe they're rallying now. Maybe the meltdown of, of crypto means that, that precious metals get some of the assets that, uh, that were allocated to, to, to crypto. I don't know. But I'm going to watch this. I want your feedback. And if I see this develop into something more positive, I will let you know. And, uh, and we will uh, talk about it more on the show. Uh, lastly, cannabis. And uh, we haven't talked about cannabis in, I bet you, a year and a half. We made some money on the cannabis stocks prior. The, uh, this is MSOS, the uh, uh, advisor shares uh, uh, pro cannabis fund. Uh, yeah, last week we had Congress insert into one of the bills uh, a way to for the banks to be able to interact and lend to the cannabis companies. This is a scheduled uh, drug uh, that's you know a, a holdover from reefer madness in the fifties, frankly. And the alcohol lobby has done a great job of tamping down any liberalization. Of, of cannabis. Now that seems to finally be abating. And uh, we will, again, this is starting to base. The volume is picking up on the updates. It is not a definitive buy to me at this point in time, but it logically makes sense. It's a, I, Massachusetts makes a tremendous amount of tax revenue from their legalized cannabis as a for instance, and so other states are going to be wanting to do this as well. And if this trend starts to reignite, I will, uh, I'll, I'll keep you abreast of, of all the above. And now for much need, much meat of levity. Uh, that's the show, folks. Uh, Kara Swisher pointed out uh, that uh, she's a Mike Birbiglia fan. Uh, his show on Broadway is getting rave reviews. I've watched him. I haven't seen him live, but uh, his Netflix specials are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is a clip. Please go to the description and, and click on the link. It's about five minutes. Uh, what I should have said was nothing. I think he's very clever, very funny. I recommend him highly. And after talking about uh, uh, crypto and stocks going down so much, I think we needed some levity. So there you go. Uh, please go to my website, stockmarketauthority.com. Sign up for free for my newsletter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. Follow me on your favorite social media. Uh, write at bakes at stockmarketauthority.com. I read everything. I respond to everything. At bakes takes underscore is my Twitter handle. I always appreciate your thoughts, ideas, feedback. I hope you have a uh, wonderful week and weekend. I will see you soon. Keep smiling. I'm Bakes. This is the Stock Market. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.